This is Maula Parish, a Catholic church in Lilongwe, located in Area 4 along M1 Road and is next to another historic Catholic church, which is a home to the poor Clares. Maula Parish has endured many seasons since its inception in 1965 and has grown so much that on Sunday, the church holds three services, while on the first Sunday of every month, the church holds four services, including a Latin service. During the years, Maula Parish has seen growth of the congregation attending its mass services. This development has triggered plans for a major project which Maula Parish is embarking on. The church decided to construct an extension to its existing church to cater for its growing congregation. The church extension idea led to the project inception on 13th of January 2016, with the project planning initiated in April 2016, and now in its final stages of preparation to its construction works. The project execution is expected to commence early November 2017. Details of Maula Parish, its history, legacy, and growth to the current situation is well explained by those who have seen it all from the beginning. One person who has lived in Lilongwe since 1973 and celebrates his golden jubilee of priesthood has more to share with us about Maula Parish. When I was coming here, I found Maula Church being taken as a cathedral. But uh, since uh, I know when it was built, I can give a little history. Um, when Lilongwe Diocese moved from Likuni to here, the first bishops, for example, Bishop Fadi and Bishop Kalilombe, they used Likuni Parish Church as the cathedral. And during the time of Bishop Kalilombe, we were given a place in Area 11 to build the cathedral of Lilongwe Diocese. The parish that accompanied the bishop coming to Lilongwe was called at that time Lilongwe Parish. And this parish is what we call now Sacred Heart Parish. So from 1962 uh, 62 to 1965, we were having baptisms here, marriages here, but would write in the books of Sacred Heart Parish. Then in 1965, Bishop Fadi, Joseph Fadi, decided that this should become a parish. And the first parish priest was Father Charles Maida. After he had been, they had been confirmed that now it will become a parish, Paul, Brother Paul, built this church from 1966 to 1969. Um, in 1979, Bishop Chimole came over here, or was appointed to come here, to take over the sea. Then uh, it was told to him about the new cathedral, but uh, he said, no, I will use this as the cathedral. So in 1982, this parish church was turned into a cathedral of the Lilongwe Diocese. That's how it came. Now, when they were building this church, it was when Lilongwe was very small. It was not even a capital. So that as it is, it was very big. But now, of course, as this Lilongwe is becoming bigger and bigger, we have more people, international people, and people around here who pray in this church, especially the Eight Ogomas. As a result now, we are, the capacity, it was for 450 people. Now we are able to have about 700 or 800 in the morning mass. So as a result, we felt the need of having this new um, church. On 13th January, 2016, a steering committee was formed these persons have dedicated their professional and personal time without charge 
to Maula Parish for this project since early 2016. Catherine Sani, the architect, produced preliminary drawings in June 2016, followed by a budget estimate done by Dave Manjawira later in July 2016. The project structural engineer is Don's Shower from RD Consultants, a non-official member. He has also offered his services on voluntary basis. Catherine gives us the details of the proposed drawings for the church extension. This is our existing church. We have been working on an extension given the issues that the church has been facing. Our current church sits a capacity of about 450 people. The extension is looking at this area where we currently have the bell tower and the lawns. The new proposal from overhead shows us pushing the church out towards the M1 road and expanding outwards curving around the bell tower and out this way towards the Port Clares. I will talk you through what will be happening in this extension part, but this is the extended part, this is the, reno this is the existing church. These are the steps coming up from the driveway to the current main entry point into the church and we have the pavement which turns down to where we will be proposing the new entry into the church will be. The detailed plan shows the, the, dry, the path which I was talking about which comes up over so up the steps, this is the existing main pathway, this is the existing main entry into the church and currently the, there's a rear entry to the church, this is the bell tower. So we are going to be turning down, coming off the path onto a patio which then takes us into the church. When we enter the new church, the new extension part, we will be faced by uh, a corridor of light which will be illuminating, dragging our view towards the St. John Paul Chapel. The St. John Paul Chapel which will be at the end of that passageway is where the altar which um, St. John Paul when he visited Malawi um, offered mass and that altar will be put into this chapel and will become a special chapel in honor of St. John Paul II. At the entry point of the double doors to our right we are going to have an Our Lady of Lord's Shrine which will be dedicated to the Holy Rosary. On our left as we enter the church there will be a nursery area which will be for families with toddlers and infants. It can seat about 20 to 30 people um, and, and annexed to that there will be a diaper change room where parents would be able to attend to their children, toddlers, but still be able to attend mass because currently noise in the mass is disturbing others and mothers and parents who've got small children feel they cannot come to church. In this annex area, there will be an additional overflow of seating. The new proposal also calls for two confessionals, one which will be wheelchair friendly and another which will be able to be used by able-bodied individuals with a seating and waiting area for the two confessionals. The existing confessionals are going to be renovated to become into bays where wheelchair users will be able to park their chairs and also attend the mass. The furniture layout just enhances and explains the proposals further so we have the ramp up it's a wheelchair bay where the, we have the current confessionals this dotted line shows where the existing wall of the church is and we are pushing the building out this way towards the m1 as i've already explained we come up of the of the pathway into the onto the portico into the main church that's the nursery area i've mentioned these are the two confessionals and that's the saint john paul chapel From the aspect of financing, the project quantity surveyor, based on the preliminary drawings in 2016, estimated that the cost of the church extension was at approximately 180 million kwacha. In February 2017, a fundraising committee was established to strategize and source the required funds for the church extensions construction. Within the directive of the Archbishop, 
We must, as much as it is possible, source the funds from local sources. With this in mind, the fundraising committee has the following fundraising strategies and plans. Four potential external donors have been identified and thereafter they will be approached to assist with funds for the shortfall balance. The preparation and sequence of the planning has taken this format. Final architectural drawings were completed in May 2017 and plans are to be submitted to Lilongwe City Council for approval. Structural drawings were finalized in June 2017. The quantity surveyor shall prepare the bill of quantities and tender documents to be ready at the end of August 2017 and it is planned to invite the selected registered contractors during September 2017. Followed by their award of the contract, the beginning of the construction is expected to take place during October 2017. It is estimated that the completion of the church extension should be November 2018. The Right Reverend Archbishop Tarsisius Ziaye is aware of the new development at Maula Parish and shares his sentiments. Uh, my opinion is that um, this project is a felt need because of the growing uh, population, uh, the congregation. Uh, particularly, I see the uh, English Mass congregation that uh, uh, on Sundays it is full and uh, my consent to the project it is because the growing number of the children who are outside who cannot fit into the in, in the church on, on Sundays so I agree to this uh, project the extension that uh, it is a felt need for our parish uh, church cathedral the Right Reverend Archbishop Tarsisius Ziae, in a meeting on 11th February 2017, in consultation with the clergy, the religious, and the laity of the Archdiocese of Lilongwe, decided to build a new cathedral, and the planning is in progress. This being the case, why is Maula Parish Extension Project needed? Father Kapinga, shares what he foresees as the future of this congregation. This is logical, let me put it this way. The building of a new cathedral, it's because people are, don't fit in in this, the so-called cathedral we are using at, at present. Now because of the number, they intend to build a church, a bigger cathedral. But this affects also for us, our church at present. We are getting more and more and people coming to pray here, especially the internationals. They meet friends here and they feel as if they belong to this parish and being also the cathedral, the bishop's place, they feel at home. As a result, the church is becoming small. Now, to build the new cathedral, as far as I know, it can take not 10 years. If it is the cathedral I, I saw they want to build, it might take more. I'll give you an example. Across the bridge, there is a Timoera church. It has, they are still building it. We started 2002. And it's more than now, more than 15 years, and they haven't finished it. So, which means the cathedral will also take as much time as, as maybe even more years. Now, where will the people be praying?
that's our concern. Comfortably come to pray and feel that they are praying to God without running out of the church because it's too hot or something like that. This is the reason why we felt it's necessary or even urgent for our church that we extend it now. But besides, this church will be used for other services. A small group want to have a retreat or they want to have a mass, they want to have a marriage or a funeral and so on and so on. That's why this church will not be outdone, not outdated. It will be useful for the people in the town and so on. When it comes to matters of finances, it is necessary to entrust the duty in capable hands. Rui Francisco expounds on the same. Um, yes, you are right. I was reluctant to do it again. But uh, seeing that uh, this has to be a concerted effort for all the parishioners, I agreed, I agreed to contribute. May I also point out that to everyone that this project is for the ex ex extension of the existing church and all the funds that we are raising are for this purpose and it has no connection whatsoever with the new cathedral project. The fundraising committee is made of hardworking and dedicated persons with integrity that have accepted this enormous challenge and will handle all the monies. In this way, parishioners may be assured that the monies will be ended professionally and applied for it to its purpose. An independent accountant has been, account has been opened in the first merchant bank, the Longwood branch, and all members of the fundraising committee are signatories and two may sign at any one time. The fundraising committee is totally independent from the fa parish finance committee. A living being is a thinking being. As such, one wonders whether it was not possible for the abandoned human resource at Maula Parish to undertake this project alone. Sandra Ndau's name goes in history as the first female chairperson for Maula Parish. She gives details of activities taking place at the parish. I'm glad and blessed for being become the first woman in Maula Parish to take charge and of the council to help the parish priest in the running of Maula Parish. It's a great responsibility and it requires hard work and it's not easy to try to balance everyone's needs and opinions. On your questions, uh, question why do we need the fundraising? This is a large project with estimated cost of 180 million kwacha. Maula Parish through the capable hands of the Finance Committee, has been able in a short period, through accountable and transparent management of the parish monies, in particular, wise investments in treasury bills, to save and have 80 million kwacha committed to this project. Of course, this still leaves a shortfall of 100 million kwacha, and this has to be done through different methods of fundraising and personal donations. You know that along recent years, a few generous families and individuals assisted the parish at no cost. They fixed a suspended ceiling in the church in 2015 to 2016. Floor tiles were applied to the entire floors. Late Orlando team repressed all church lights and fixed new suspended fittings over the center aisle. The grotto of Our Lady of Lords underwent a total renovation as it was about to collapse. And in 2014, a shrine to Our Lady of Africa was built to commemorate Maula Golden Jubilee. As I said, this was achieved by three families and two individuals and it was with this in mind that we are now appearing to all parishioners to donate funds and time for this large and worthy project for the extension of the church 
due to the large sums involved in this has to be a concerted effort of everyone in this parish. The task of extending this church at Maula Parish cannot be left in the hands of the parishioners alone. This is a structure, a temple, that is being raised to glorify the Lord. For any God-fearing individual, it is the right thing to contribute generously to the glory of God. As the Bible says, God blesses the cheerful giver. A good measure pressed down and shaken together shall be rewarded to those who lend to God in this project.